Welcome to the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. Now, as many of you know out there, if you're looking at an outdoor show, you're looking at stuff living outside as well, and generally working outside maybe. I guess another you must have already thought about it. What happens when the supermarket's shut? What happens when the takeaway's shut? What happens when there's no food? Hmm, you're gonna to have to go out there and get it for yourself. And the ones that are gonna survive first, you would think would be, as they call them, I think, on these TV shows, doomsday preppers. Well, that's fine. They got this underground bunker full of food, full of ammunition, but sooner or later, in five or 10 years, they will run out of ammunition, they will run out of food, they will have to go outside to eat, then they're in the same boat as everybody else. You're gonna to have to learn. One of the things they're gonna to have to learn to do without is this. That's right, just regular electrical battery light, right? There will be no batteries, there's no factories to make them. They're not gonna make any electricity, everything's shut down. Now you've got the light from your fire and you need to learn how to light fires. You need to know how to make some light. I'm gonna tell you how you can do that. You get the protein from the fish that you catch, netting, trapping, spearing, however you get those fish, don't waste them. Eat the fish's protein, boil down those guts and livers especially hold oil concentrates. You will get lamp oil that can at least light your cave, your dwelling, whatever bivouac, whatever lean to, whatever you've got. And of course, you can see you can work around it. It does work. I'm going to show you exactly how it does work here on the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. And we're going into, yes, the Totally Awesome Garage. Okay, the first thing you do is when you gut the fish, when you clean it for eating it, is get it in that bucket. Now I'm just using, obviously you can use an ordinary fire, but just for the purpose of this film, I'm using just a camping cooker. So you would normally be doing this on the end game, you'd be doing over a wood log fire, embers, just a natural fire. But I'm gonna boil this up, I'm just gonna use a couple of old saucepans, and they're actually the same ones I use for melting my fishing leads in. So I won't be boiling the potatoes and eating them out of here anytime soon, will I? Especially after putting this in there. I cut off any surplus, I try and leave sort of livers. I don't even bother much with the gut, I don't bother with the flesh, because I've eaten the flesh, haven't I? I've actually eaten the fish. I suppose you could use the head, but I'd really, you know, when I've done this before, I've got more oil out of livers than anything else. So that obviously is the part that the fish processes um, in its natural environment when it's eating, let's say it's a salmon, it's eating other oily fish. It retains that oil in its flesh and that's what I want to try and boil out if I can. You can see there just around the edges, even though it's only, well, the heat's barely got into this, I'll just stir it up a bit, but you can see that the oil is around there. Now, there is an old saying, I don't know, it's just a British one, don't stir with a knife. If you stir with a knife, you'll stir up strife. So hopefully I don't get any strife in my family, but uh, there you go. When you're out and you're you know, hunting, the main implement you're gonna have to protect yourself, feed yourself, cut wood with, might just be a knife. It might not even, let's face it folks, be a knife. Now, you can see there, even though it's not boiling, the oil is coming to the surface. You can see big globules of the um, surplus stuff coming up there. It's like a, a fine sort of bubble that's coming up to the surface there. Now, as it actually heats up, that's gonna start popping and bubbling and that, all that liver area uh, gut is gonna start breaking down. And you can see there, it boils. Now it doesn't boil like water because it's got oil in it. It boils a lot, lot different. You can boil it over, so don't put too much guts in there. You know, maybe do, I'm guessing, half a saucepan at a go. Yes, yes, I know I got a whole saucepan in there, but that was possibly my mistake. So I'm keeping my eye on it so it doesn't boil over. And you can see the left-hand one being the larger pan has yet to boil, but you can see those oil bubbles when I zoom in, you can see them starting to pop there, and that's the reaction you want. You want to be able to see those bubbles. Now, after 10 minutes, that's all it takes. All I'm left is with the really gunky bits of meat at the bottom. Most of it, the majority of all that meat, remember if you look at the first frame of the pictures, you'll see all the guts I put in there, they have nearly all gone. They've just totally disappeared into oil. Now, this came from trout, These the, the, the flesh I'm using here, rainbow trout. Um, you know, even when you take it off the stove and you put it to the side on the stones, because it's oil, you can see it is still boiling, it's still bubbling away, it's very, very hot. One assumes that when the British had their castles and they were attacked, that's why they poured boiling oil over 
onto their protagonists below, the people attacking them. Because I'm assuming, I'm just guessing, so I'm not a historian, but boiling oil stays hotter longer than boiling water. I may be wrong, somebody out there in the physics world might be able to tell me. Once boiled up and it's really gone down to pretty well nothing, I actually take it off, put it to the side and you can see it's just hammering away there, still boiling even though I stood it on the stones. So I guess that's why we used to tip it over castle walls onto people. So they deserve it as well. Good, wa good waste of lamp oil actually when you think about it. So let that one cool down, let it all cool down and then I'm going to get a plastic bucket and I'm putting a fine mesh sieve in here. Now obviously you can have uh, maybe some grass if you were out in the wild. Uh, you could probably use some, some grass to filter all this and um, I'm just using this purely just to show you, just trying to refine it, just trying to refine it and get it a little bit thinner. Now it's pretty clear but there will be some gunky bits of meat left in the bottom but look at that. When you consider how much I put in there, there's virtually nothing left at all. In fact, I think if I boiled it harder, it would actually, or for longer, I say harder, can only boil it at a certain temperature, um, I'm sure there would be even less meat. So I'm just gonna filter the worst of this through there. As I say, you could probably do this, uh, you make a grass one, you can make a wicker one if you're out in the wild, but the main thing is to strain the oil off, I'm sure if you're living in a cave, going from day to day existence, you're not too worried what actually uh, you use to burn as an oil. I'm just straining it off there with a knife and then I'm going to let it cool down. Well, as you can see, even though I strain that, when I lift this out, there is look, virtually nothing in there at all. So that's an amazing amount of liquid just to get out of those fish guts alone. I think anybody would be surprised at exactly how much you can get out of these. Okay, I've now let the oil cool down. You can see there, it's gone completely orange. It's just all oil now. I think when I've done this before, I've refined it more by giving it another boil up, but we're gonna just show you that this will burn as neat oil. And there's a lot in there. That, and I've bought myself a piece of wick, and I'm gonna make a little lamp here by using just a jam jar with a metal lid and you want to make sure that you drill a hole through it which I want a bit bigger hole there because I want it for the wick I don't want to that's it I want to get that wick through so I've got the right size drill now listen I know if you're going this is the ultimate survival if you were going to you know actually boil oil you, there's two or three ways I want to show you that at least it works doing this you want enough wick down there to draw up in what they call capillary action. It soaks up through here. So I'm gonna cut that about there, feed it back through the lid and just leave a little tag end up, sticking up at the top. So the oil when I put it in here actually soaks up through capillary action to the top of the wick. And that's what I'm gonna light. The other uh, point just to show you this is what I'm gonna do is sometimes in, in say hot countries, I think you'll find that the, the oil is gonna expand in here and the heat from the wick here will warm it and it gets extra oil trickling out from here and if you have a, a dome effect there if you like it's going to run across to that ridge gradually and eventually the whole lot's going to catch fire you know no problem because I'm just showing you in a jar but what I'm going to do is make sure any oil goes back inside there by leaving slight depression just a little depression in the top of that there you can see just push that in you can even tap it with a hammer if you want so I'm going to get the wick fed through there cut it to length and then we're going to fill it with oil and at least stage one I can show you that it does actually burn. Okay there you should be able to see I've got the wick going through it's just going to curl itself on the bottom and that's we're going to soak up the oil so let's put some oil in there anyway. Let's hope, hope that we don't spill this in my garage or is it garage? That is more than enough. I'm going to give that, it's going to draw up in there anyway. But what I'm going to do is just pull that bit through there, give it a bit of a soak just there to get it started. Wipe off the surplus. It's fish oil, so it's going to smell fishy, but it could get you out of trouble for lighting 
when there is no electricity around. I'm going to screw that up. Let's get a cloth. I'm just going to wipe that. Okay, I've already done a test light on this one. Make sure it's working all right. Now, as you can see, once that gets going, there we go. That's working away there. Very nicely, plenty of light for you. Now, obviously, if you're out and you're in the wild and you're in a cave, you're not going to have a glass jar, are you? But you can see, I'm showing you these for the principle that you can get this food in the shape of fish. You can eat the fish and you can still get the oil out and you can make use of the oil. If you're in a cave, if you're in a bivy, if you, if you, wherever you are, you've got some light. Obviously, you need flame to start the light, and there's plenty of information on how to light fires out there. But what I'm trying to say is, here is a product here that can be used for oil, for illumination. Okay, to refine it a bit more, I've actually put it back on and boiled it again. You can see there thousands and thousands of little tiny bubbles, and the circulation it's giving as that oil is, I would suggest, refining itself even more. Maybe there is there might be impurities in it, I don't know, natural ones that occur in the fish. But it's getting purer and clearer all the time on the second boil. I was boiling down a second time, I was given a second boil off to the oil that I uh, initially started with, which was that one. As you can see, that one does work. That's the one we've done all these tests with, but that's what it goes like when you boil off those impurities a second time. So a second boil if you want really pure fish oil, I feel is well worth doing it. Now, I'm not saying it might burn any differently. It might burn less fishy. I've no idea. But all I can say, you might, I hope, be able to see the difference between the two clarities there. So there must be impurities left in this one. And the second boil off, which only took about barely 10 minutes on the camping cooker, gets a bit clearer so there you go two different types and the same oil maybe maybe well, I'm gonna call it premium quality there you go another old school way of doing this again just showing you for illustration purposes I'm using a tin in this case as a base just use the tin as a base you can get a pebble or a stone a piece of sock tied around like that I pinched it with a piece of wire again Obviously in a while, where you're going to get your sock, where you're going to get a piece of wire, don't forget there is nothing, it's the end of the world, there's, there, there's no ironmongers to go and get stuff, but it gives you the principle that this oil should work. Now I've refined it by giving it another, I don't think you can see that there guys, I'll give it another boil up, get rid of some of the uh, impurities in there, and you can do the same principle of putting the oil in there, and that same capillary action is going to work here. You see it sizzling away there. That's going to draw up. You can see it there, absolutely sucking up there. Because that's, that's hot oil. And that will still light at the top there. You should actually be able to see that if I can get zoomed in on there. On the way that that cotton is sucking up that oil. You can see the white is effectively what we would call that. We call that the wick, obviously the wick, but you can see it's nearly soaked up the whole of that stone over the top. It's almost down to uh, the knot bit there. So we let it soak up a little bit more and then we can light it and you'll see that that's another way. You could, you could still use this stone method and put it in a depression in a boulder or a rock and put the oil in there. Don't forget this is a fish oil. This costs you nothing except time. You've already caught the fish for protein to live on so you're making use of the oil as well. You should be able to see that burning away there. And it just burns through the top half of the stone. Okay, I'll see if I can put the lights out for you. You should be able to see a bit more. And I'll just spin off the camera light there. I don't know, uh, you can see, I don't know whether that... Right, guys, that's, that's with the light off. That's totally off there. Now, I have absolutely no idea how long that's going to burn for. I've done it before uh, with these little stone wicks, you can call them if you like. They burn for some time. But you can see there's another way of giving you some light. If you're out, you're stuck in a cave, you're in your bivouac, and, you know, it's, 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 it's just made from... The natural materials, obviously, not. don't put these things in tents or anything like that. Naked flames and new uh, nylon tents do not go together. This is for the 
end of the world scenario I'm calling it when we're absolutely back to basics but there you can see that capillary action is sucking the oil up it's burning away eventually that will burn itself out and that's in pitch dark it's absolutely pitch dark I'm going to put the lamp back on again now that's what normal humans see that I fear is what we're going to be using when the supermarkets close so pass it on to the next generation fish oil as used years ago does actually work as a light Okay, another scenario here people, I put it in a dog's bowl. Let's just move that around a second for you. Let's see what I'm doing now. I've made myself a little wick with wire, as you can see, a little piece of wick just to show you, it's just to show you, obviously, out in the doomsday area, there will be no metal, you see, there will be no metal, so you'll have no more bowls. But if you put some water in the bottom, just like this, and then, you put your fish oil in, it will float on top of the water, he says hopefully, this is the principle that's been used years ago, and I dip the wick in, I drop it into the pan like this, so it might just take a couple of minutes or so for this oil to come to the top of the water, you can see it popping there already, but what will happen was I like that, that will burn, but it's like almost a sort of bit of a safety thing. It can burn right down the wick, and when it burns the oil out, it gets to the water, it's going to put the flame out anyway. It'll just go to embers and put the flame out. Again, how long that will burn for, depends on how much oil you put in there, etc, etc. But just to show you a principle, another way to get you guys thinking, how else can I make use of fish oil as a lighting compound? Again, it gets drawn up, the capillary action will draw up that oil, into the wick here. You can use pieces of rope, you can use pieces of grass material, you can find all the different types. If you probably look on the, on the internet or YouTube, you'll find loads of different things like that, you know, materials you can use in the wild. Natural, natural. I'm doing this in a sort of unnatural environment, trying to show you will it work or not. There we go. Let that one get warmed up, let that oil suck up there. And again, that's the sort of third method it shows you. You've seen the regular one in the glass jar with a wick. You've seen making your own wick with a, a piece of cotton sock, piece of cotton tennis sock to make the wick. Of course, you can use different sizes, grasses, hemp's and stuff like that. Or you can use what I call the safety version, which you're probably never going to need in the uh, doomsday survival anyway. You probably want the light, a light you don't want it put in now, but it's a safety factor. Do not do these inside a house, inside anywhere. This is just to show you how this oil, fish oil that I've boiled up myself and actually caught the fish myself, will burn. Let's put the light out, you can see again. The flame there. I'm gonna turn the camera light out for you. Right, that's the floodlight out. Now, I don't know if you can see that. You should be able to. Don't suppose for a minute, you'll be able to see me in there. Maybe you will be. I'd rather not have boiling oil all over my face, but it shows you if you're in a cave somewhere or sheltering, you can use this oil to help give you some light. And don't forget, you've had all the protein from eating that fish as well. Final survival technique. You might be attacked by animals. You might need to go deeper into a cave for shelter. The small little candle type light might not do it. But what about tying grass, sticks, going to try some cotton sock. Man, I'll have no cotton socks left at this rate. Around a big stick, light it, would it work? Would it work? I think it might. Now people, I have no intention of taking this into my garage, which has 50 litres of outboard fuel in there, in petrol. So much pain that I'm bare thinking about. Paraffin and all the usual men's stuff, but there you go. You can see just a cotton sock around this piece of bamboo, any stick you want, just lightly soaked in oil, and look, it's just burning. I can disappear off into a cave, I can go hunting, I can ward off whatever I want. The tax man, I don't know. And there it is burning. 
So it shows you, yes, this oil burns. And you can look, you can wave it around. The wind shouldn't blow it out too much. It's just regular fish oil. It does the job. It's burning there. And of course you just tie two or three up and then when one burns out, just light the other one from it. You've seen it in all the films. Does it work? I might set the microphone a light here. Yes, it works. People, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. Just a few tips there, hopefully. Wow, and you get heat from it as well. And there you go, you can refine your own oil. Your own oil. There's loads of tips out there about using oil for lamps, but have any of them done it by boiling their own fish guts down? Well, that's hot. Better go and put this guy out. Thanks for watching.